In Downing Street, where the Prime Minister resides, first the Polish ambassador, then the German chargé d'affaires are visitors. Opposition leaders, as well as cabinet members, are called into conference. Though the situation is acute, war is not absolutely inevitable, we are told. Hello, Mr. Hutchinson. I'll be your interviewer. I am Laura, and you are sitting in people, and I come from Wolfram Primary School. Can you introduce yourself and what role do you play in this school? Yeah, um, as you said, I'm, my name is Mr. Hutchinson and I'm a teacher at Wilburn Primary School. Do you know anything about your granddad? Yes, uh, I know that I obviously I knew my granddad and my granddad was a soldier in the First World War. How old was your granddad when he started the war? Well, when he started the war, he was supposed to be 17, he, had supposed to be, he was supposed to be 17 to join the army, but he lied about his age, he was only 16 when he joined the army. Why did he want to join the war? At the time, it was the, seemed to be the right thing to do, it was something called, it was a very patriotic thing to do, and um, there was somebody called Lord Kitchener, who was trying to raise an army, and he was called the People's Army, and my granddad really wanted to join. Did any of his family members join with him? Uh, not with him at the time, but his two brothers both joined the army before him because they were older. What job did he do? Uh, my father was just a regular private in the infantry, infantry man. He was just a regular soldier. How long was he in the war? He joined the army in 1915 and he was discharged in 1919 from the army. So he, was, he served from 1915 until the end of the First World War. Did he ever get trenched for he never got trench foot, but he did get injured a couple of wounds. He was shot once and he was near a, a bomb that went off once. And both times he was, uh, had, to go, uh, had to go back to the United Kingdom to get fixed up and then sent back to France to carry on fighting. In the towns, the front line of modern war, the health services were organised to deal with the menace of air attack. The voluntary and municipal hospitals were linked together under one national health service. Do you have any documents? That to yeah, I've got a few things on my sister cat. Um, this document here is his pass for when he finished his training and it allowed him to be out of his camp to travel the 19th of September 1915. So I think he probably sailed to France on the 20th of September 1915. So that's a really good document. It tells me which company and which regiment he was in. Um, she, also sent me, she also sent me this, which is a photograph a photograph of the hospital ship that he came back in when he was wounded the first time and she sent me this rather tatty old postcard which shows the hospital that he went in. I've actually been there and it's now a block of flats, it's been converted into a block of flats but it still looks pretty much like that. And the last thing that she sent me was this which was a picture of the soldiers that had just been in the hospital and were ready to go back and my granddad is him standing down on the right hand side. Okay. Do you know any stories about your friend? Well, I found out from some papers that my sister kept um, that he, I found out which regiment he was in, and I did a bit of research, and I know he was uh, fighting in the Battle of, of the Somme in July 1916. And I found what his company and his regiment did, and they had a terrible day. They were fighting in a small French village, and they had to run across no man's land. There would have been about 180 men fighting at the time, and they were caught in some German trenches, and they spent the whole day there trapped and being shot at. And eventually, the people that were still alive ran back, and there were only about 30 people got back, so about 150 of the people he was fighting with would have been killed, so he, he, he knew that he did that on the 1st of July 1916. How do you think he felt? I love talking to my granddad, and I used to look at his medals and things when I was growing up, and used to talk to him, but he refused to talk about what he did in the First World War, because I think he was probably so upset by some of the things he'd seen, he just didn't want to remember. Thank you, Mr Hutchinson, for answering these questions. Thank you, Laura.